In this video, we're looking at how to set up a private RTMP server for live streaming with OBS and Nginx. Now, the first thing I wanna do is do a quick overview of what exactly is gonna be happening here uh, because this was pretty confusing to me in the beginning and I didn't find any good explanations of what exactly is going on. So this is how it works. The first step is that on your computer at home, you have uh, OBS installed and you're playing a game or doing something. And so OBS is gonna capture and encode the video on your local computer. So OBS is installed on your local computer and it is set up so that it live streams directly to the RMP, RTMP server's IP address. And so it sends the live stream out to the server. And then on the server, OBS is not running there, but Nginx is running. And Nginx receives the live stream because OBS is sending it directly to it. And once in Nginx receives that live stream, it then redistributes it out to other streaming services like YouTube or Twitch. And so to take a look at the software that needs to be installed on each computer, on your local computer, you're gonna just need to have OBS and whatever programs you need there, games or whatever. And then on the server, which could be a Windows or a Linux server, uh, you essentially just are running Nginx. So that, so this is the, uh, the overview of what we're gonna do. And uh, let's go ahead and set that up. For this server, I'm gonna use Amazon Web Services, AWS. And so let's start by launching that server from scratch. Um, first thing you're gonna need to do is make a, uh, make a account, of course, and sign into AWS. Once you're there, uh, that's, this is the home. So I'm gonna go to EC2. And EC2 is where we're gonna uh, launch our instance. So I'm gonna click launch instance. And here we have to pick what type of instance we want. Now we could use the Ubuntu server 1604. Um, and I'll probably cover that in a, in a future video. That's what this uh, tutorial on the OBS project website covers. But for simplicity and just explaining the concept, I'm gonna use Windows Server 2016, and that's free, so I'm gonna select that. And the next one here is what type of server you wanna use. Now, these all cost money, but the T2 Micro is free tier eligible, and that seems to be perfectly fine for uh, streaming as an Nginx server. So I'm gonna go next, configure instance details, and I wanna just jump right to uh, configure security group. And on my security group, I'm gonna add a rule. And what I'm gonna do here is HTTP traffic. And uh, I'm gonna say anywhere for that. And then I'm gonna add another rule for HTTPS. And we're gonna set that to uh, anywhere. There's a remote desktop. And so that is set to custom. Um, I could set that to anywhere or I could say my IP so that I can only uh, remote desktop in from, from my local IP, from my local internet service provider. And then we're also gonna need a custom uh, TCP rule that covers port 1935. And uh, again, we could do my IP address, but I'll just set this to anywhere. And that's actually giving me a warning so let's say for 19, port 1935, we're only gonna allow it for my IP uh, because we're only live streaming, again, from my IP address out to the server. So that, so that should be fine. So we've set up these uh, custom rules and now I'm gonna say review and launch. And I'm gonna hit launch. And what you're gonna have to do here is uh, create a new key pair and let's name that, we'll just say test server, it doesn't matter, and I'm gonna say download key pair, and here it is in my downloads folder, so I'm gonna launch instance. Now it's important that you keep this file or else you won't be able to get access to your server. Um, so the instance is now launching, I'm gonna click view instances, and this is gonna take about five minutes to uh, get up and running. One thing I'm gonna do in the meantime is just give it a name, 
I'll say this is a Windows test. And uh, so yeah, this will take about five minutes to get up and running. And let's come right back. Okay, so now the uh, Windows test server is up and running. I'm gonna right click on it and say connect. Now before I can connect, I'm gonna have to get the Windows password. So I'm gonna click get password, choose file, and we have to select that uh, PEM file and say decrypt password. And here is the password. We're probably gonna need to use that quite a bit. So I'm just gonna throw it in a notepad for a second. And we could say download remote desktop file. And so here is the remote desktop file and we could see it in the downloads folder. I'm just going to move it over to the desktop. And if we want to edit this, we could right click edit and any changes that we made, for example, if we wanted the audio to play on the remote computer instead of this computer, then you, you could change any options that you want here and then come back to the general tab and hit save. That will save this file. So I'm going to double click this and I'm going to say, don't ask me again. I just want to connect. There's where I need the password. So I'm going to grab that password again and paste it into here. And I'm going to say, remember my credentials. So I don't have to do that again. And don't ask me again for connections to this computer. And now I should be able to, to remote desktop into the server that's uh, at Amazon. So Windows is take just a second here. And all we're going to do is install Nginx and uh, configure it. So open up Internet Explorer and we'll just do a search. Actually, let me take a quick uh, break to install Chrome. All right, so Chrome is installed. I'm going to type in Nginx and there's a couple websites. This is the, the main one. This is the best place to go where you could get all the downloads. But uh, for Windows, we need the Nginx Griffin version. So I'm going to type Nginx Griffin. And that should give us this index slash download, which is going to be the 1711.3 Griffin.zip. Okay, that zip is done downloading. I'm going to make a folder onto the desktop called Nginx. And let's just get this into there. All right, so I got my server up and running. I've got the uh, I've got Nginx installed, and now we need to go to the comp folder to set up the uh, Nginx configuration file. And I'm gonna open up nginxwin.conf, and uh, we want Notepad for that. And this one is not that great. It's it's uh, the the it looks pretty bad, but that's okay. We're just gonna forget about everything that's up here, and we want to paste some stuff into the bottom of here. This is from the uh, OBS t project website and the tutorial there. So we're gonna say our OBS Nginx RCMP. The top result should probably be this: how to set up your own private server using Nginx. And uh, in here, we're going to want to grab this code for the RTMP and paste that right here. So we notice the port 1935. That's why we have a, a rule set up for that. Chunk size 4096. Application live. Live on and record off. And uh, this will add some more text to this pretty soon. But... Um, so that it sends it out to YouTube and Twitch and all that. But for now, let's just go ahead and save this as, and I'm going to say all files, we're going to save it as nginx.conf. So now that that's set up, we need to get the uh, IP address of this server. And with Amazon Web Services, it's a little bit different than just grabbing the IP address. Um, we'll actually use the public DNS right here. So let's go back to the server and uh, finish this last line here. We're going to go back to the um, how to set up your own private RMTP server and just get this push command. And we're going to paste that in right here. Now we're going to need to log into YouTube and get our streaming service RTMP URL and our stream key. And we're going to have to put those into these two fields. 
So here I am on the live stream page on YouTube and uh, the encoder set up. So get the server URL. That goes in right here. And you're going to notice the RTMP is already there. And then the next part that goes into there is the stream key. And uh, I'm not going to show mine, but it's going to look something like four letters and numbers dash, four letters and numbers dash, something like this. Okay. So then you need a semicolon at the end. And that's how you're going to set this up. Let's launch Nginx just so that it's running. And then we can test to see if the thing is actually working. So um, I'm just going to double click on the NGINX, Nginx uh, executable file. And that's telling me that they can't start because this DLL is missing. That is actually the Microsoft Visual C++ 2010 Service Pack 1 redistributed package. The 32-bit uh, and also the 64-bit. So download both of these. Now this has to be the 2010 version. Uh, so if you download 2012, you'll have file names with the exact same file name, but it's actually a different version of the Visual C++ redistributable. So install these two, it should be really fast. You need both the 32-bit and the 64-bit one. Okay, now that those are installed, let's go back to Nginx and we'll launch the Nginx exe. And it's just gonna run and go away. So if you wanna make sure that it's running, you could start Task Manager and uh, check underneath the van. You, here we see that the Nginx is running and now I'm going to minimize the server back on my local computer now. So we're going to try and connect to the server uh, and see if the Nginx is running. So I'm going to copy the public DNS. I'm going to open up a new tab. And uh, there we go. And paste that address in. And I see welcome to Nginx. Now this is not going to work because the Windows firewall is blocking it. Now I've already added the rules, but I want to show you what rules I had to add to make this work. And I was able to test this by going on the local server and just opening up the web browser, go to 127.0.0.1. And that was, shows me the welcome to Nginx page, which means that the Nginx server is running. And uh, when I did that for my local computer, that didn't work. And that was because the Windows firewall was blocking that. So I had to make two rules. I'm going to show them to you here. Um, first of all, I made the Nginx rule. And uh, and uh, all I did was a new rule, port. And I put port 1935 into there. And I said allow the connection. And uh, we did that for the outbound rule as well. And then there's another one that I called web, and that just allows port 80 through. So I said allow port, and it says example, just like the example here, 80. And we want to allow the connection for port 80, both in and out. So I've created two rules, well actually four rules in the Windows firewall. One that allows the Nginx through on port 1935. One that allows the web traffic through on port 80. And that goes for both the inbound and, and the outbound. If you have those Windows firewall rules set up, then from your local machine, you should be able to uh, put that public DNS in and you're gonna get this message, welcome to Nginx. And that means that the Nginx server is running and it's ready to receive a stream. So the next thing that we need to do is go to our OBS. And so let me open up OBS here. And uh, we just need to set up the stream options. So I'm gonna go to the settings and in the settings, we need to go to the streaming options. So click stream and uh, normally use the streaming services, which is you can Twitch or YouTube or whatever. Um, I'm going to select custom streaming service. And now we need to put a URL in. So the URL here looks like this. It's RTMP colon slash slash. And then you put the public DNS of your server in slash live. So if I type that RTMP colon slash slash, we're going to grab the public DNS of our server, which is right here. 
and uh, that goes here and then we just need a slash live now the stream key is irrelevant you could type anything you want in here um, just put something in there and hit apply so now OBS is set to stream to your uh, server at Amazon and because Nginx is already running on the server it's gonna accept that live stream and if we go back to our configuration file which is in the Nginx, Nginx conf and the nginx.conf so looking in the Nginx configuration file that we had edited earlier uh, it's listening on 1935 and if it receives a live stream it's gonna automatically push it out to our YouTube uh, URL along with our, our stream key so now that OBS is set to stream to that I'm gonna hit OK and I'm just gonna click start streaming now you can see that if you've done everything correctly it does start streaming and uh, now it is live streaming to our Amazon server over here and uh, because Nginx is is running and we can see it in the task manager Nginx is now receiving that live stream and if we set, set up our configuration file correctly it's gonna redistribute that live stream out to YouTube so if I go back to my YouTube dashboard page I can see that the stream is now live it might take a second to get there because it's being re relayed off of Amazon but uh, I am live and that live stream is uh, of course coming from Nginx now there's one problem that I haven't been able to figure out so if you have any ideas please comment let me know what the fix is I really am trying to find a fix for this problem because after about two minutes I get a, a stream health of red bad even though I don't see really any problems with it um, YouTube reports on the stream health that, uh, that there's no audio and I believe that's what this error is from but I'm getting this error please change the video container format the current container format is not correct for this configuration so I haven't been able to find a solution for that what I did was uh, on this guide there is a discussion which takes you to the forum and so if you go to the last page or at least if you go to page 31 um, I asked the question here everything works great but I'm getting this error and I just got a response you will need to provide your config for us to answer that remove any sensitive information first okay so I'm gonna provide the config file for for these guys and if you know if you know why the why we're getting this um, bad video container format let me know it doesn't seem to actually cause any problems at all the stream still runs great so anyways I'm gonna leave the video here and I hope this helped you out the and then future video we're gonna set up um, we'll probably set this up on Linux with an Ubuntu server because Windows is a little bit overkill for doing this it's fine just to throw it on like a Raspberry Pi or something like that so we're gonna set up this in uh, in Linux but it's the same exact process we're just doing it on a different OS so if it helped you out push the like button subscribe for more videos and I will see you guys in the comment section below